In this video, I'm going to talk about permutations and combinations. And I'm going to use these little red, green, and blue squares. I'm going to calculate the permutations for seven objects, between one and seven objects. And I'm going to show you the official equation. It looks kind of nasty, but uh, I will walk you through it. Imagine I have three squares, red, green, and blue. And for a combination, the order does not matter. If I have a green, blue, red square combination, a red, green, blue square combination, it's still only one combination. For permutations, the order does matter. I can take these three squares and make six permutations. Now let me just fill in all the squares and all the different permutations. And I will have six, hopefully. There's one, two, three, four, five, six permutations without repeating. And only one combination. So we have six permutations and one combination possibility. So now imagine I have four squares instead of three. I still can only make one combination from those four squares, but I can make 24 permutations. I can rearrange them 24 different ways for 24 permutations, but I still only have one combination. I am going to show you the permutations of different number of objects. I'm going to start with one and end up with seven. So with one object, it should be pretty obvious. There's one permutation. Now with two objects, I have a red and a green object, and I can sequence them two different ways or order them two different ways. And that gives me two permutations. So I take two times one, and this is equal to two. With three objects, I have a red, green, and blue. So I have three, which is n, three is n, three times two times one, which gives me six permutations. Now I have four objects. So n is equal to four. So I have four times three times two times one like that, which equals to 24 permutations. Now I have five objects or n is equal to five. And I take five times, you guessed it, five times four times three times two times one. And this is equal to 120. And now I'll imagine I have six objects. And you probably understand now it's going to be six times five times four times three times two times one. And this is equal to 720 permutations. Now with seven objects, this is my last one. I have seven times six times five times four times three times two times one is net equals 5,040. And it turns out I can take these seven objects and create 5,040 different permutations. You probably notice the same pattern, the seven times six times five and then six times four times three times two one one and so on and so forth. I can't read that fast. And then I have four times three times two times one and so on and so forth. I go, there's a word for this and a symbol too. It's called factorial. So the shorthand notation for two times one is two factorial. The shorthand notation for three times two times one is three factorial. You're probably guessing this one's four factorial. 
and 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 5 factorial. Again, this is shorthand notation, so you don't have to write this out every single time. And the last one, of course, is 7 factorial. So you might even see it written like this in your textbooks, or your professor does it this way. The only thing the factorial symbol means is, like in this case, 3 times 2 times 1 is 3 factorial, and 2 factorial is 2 times 1, and so on and so forth. Also, 1 factorial is 1. Now, if I want to know the number of permutations, I just take the number of objects I have, factorial, and this is my permutations. So, if I want to know how many different ways can I organize these four objects, it's 4 factorial, which is simply 24. Now, the official formula is this, n factorial divided by n minus the small n factorial. In other words, how many different ways can I organize these five objects? Take an n at a time, the number selected. In this case, it's five. I'm taking all five. And this is equal to five factorial divided by five minus n, which is 5. I'm taking all 5 of these objects and all this factorial. This is equal to 5 factorial divided by 0 factorial, which is a new idea maybe for you. And it turns out 0 factorial is equal to 1. But so is 1 factorial is equal to 1. It's one of the mysteries of math, and I'll maybe discuss that in another video. I will discuss that. So now I have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 1, which is equal to 120. So it turns out that I have 120 permutations and one combination. And 120 permutations. I'm probably repeating myself. In the next video... I'm going to talk about how to calculate permutations and combinations if I have five objects. And let's just say, for example, I pick three at a time. I pick those three, or those three, or these three, or maybe some in the middle, like the green one, the yellow one, the purple one. And I'll use two different equations. And this is the equation, again, for permutations. And this is the equation for combinations. Notice I just add that one little thing. Again, I'll discuss this in detail in the next video, and see you there. Share the knowledge and share the love. Like us on Facebook, Google+, you can find us on Twitter. Questions and comments below, and don't forget to subscribe because I'm always posting new things. And the next video is coming right up. Roll.